Big Daddy Kane. Long live the Kane. Never heard it. When people talk about the greatest years in hip hop, they typically say 93, 94, 96. My personal opinion, I think 2000 was pretty great. 2015 was pretty good. 2017, 2018. But the undisputed greatest year in hip hop history is 1988. Now you may be saying to yourself, free. If 1988 was the greatest year in hip hop, why are there so many albums that you haven't heard? Well, without going into too much detail or getting too personal, 1988 and 89 was a very dark time in my family's history. And suffice it to say that the last thing on our mind was what hip hop record was coming out. The reason why I hadn't heard all these albums that came out in 1988 didn't hit me until I started doing this series. So this series has actually been very therapeutic for me. So if you're watching, thanks. So let's talk about Big Daddy Kane. The first three songs on this album, Long Live the Kane, Raw, and Set It Off, are a masterclass in how to battle rap. Raw and Set It Off were singles, but they never charted. Regardless, those songs are still some of his best known songs. His only other rival was probably Rakim, and in these first three songs, he seems to be going at him quite a bit. In Long Live the Kane, he says, let's make a long story short, I ain't no joke. On Set It Off, he says, the rap soloist, you don't want none of this. And in return in 89, Rakim says, no need to speed, slow down and let the leader lead. Word to daddy indeed. In interviews, they both say that this was just a coincidence and there was never a battle, but it's kind of hard to take that seriously. So the first three songs on this album were set up to show you that Big Daddy Kane is the greatest rapper of all time. Nobody's ever gonna touch him and he is an animal. And then we get The Day You're Mine. I can't imagine anyone who liked the first three songs actually enjoying this song. He slows down his flow to LL Cool J, I Need Love Mode, and it is not good. I don't know who's singing the hook on this song, but it sounds like Boy George with a cold. And unfortunately, this is a foreshadowing of what would eventually cause him to decline in popularity in future years. On the bug tip is a song where him and Scoob Lover go back and forth. It sounds like they're freestyling and they're not really taking themselves too seriously. And it's kind of nice to hear this version of Kane. Obviously, he does have a sense of humor. I mean, he wrote for Biz Marquee. Next, we have Ain't No Half Steppin'. Now, Big Daddy Kane released four singles on this album, but this was by far the biggest one. Unlike Raw and Set It Off, Kane slowed down his flow, but he kept the punchline that he was known for. In other words, he dumbed down for his audience and doubled his dollars. The student really did become the master. Next we have I'll Take You There. This is apparently the first song that he and Marley Maul actually worked together on. The song takes place in this fantasy world where there's no violence, crime, or drug addiction. Sort of like Curtis Blows If I Rule the World. I appreciate the idea, but the song is man. On Just Rhyming With Biz, Big Daddy Kane uses almost the exact same freestyle that he used on On The Bug Tip. To use the same freestyle in the same album feels like a misstep. The song also got me wondering, what would have happened if Big Daddy Kane and Biz Marquee had teamed up together and made a whole album? They would have been like Chuck D and Flavor Flav. Although, he probably would have had to write all the raps, which sounds like a lot of work. Next, we have Mr. C's Master Plan, which is mostly an instrumental song where Mr. C and Big Daddy Kane are shouting at their homies. The album closes out with Word to the Motherland, which, although I don't agree with the teachings of Minister Farrakhan, it's a pretty great way to finish the album. It's obvious from listening to this album that Big Daddy Kane wanted to be seen as a lot of different things. The battle rapper, the sensitive male, the class clown, the Asiatic black man. And it makes me wish that we as a hip hop community had given him a little more wiggle room to be who we wanted to be and explore a little bit. Having said that, on this album, when he moved out of his comfort zone, the results were not stellar. I completely understand why this album is a classic. Big Daddy Kane is the blueprint for battle rappers, fast rappers, smooth talking rappers, punchline rappers, rappers. Aside from the first three songs and Ain't No Half Step in, I probably wouldn't listen to most of this album again. So have you heard Long Live the Kane? Are you still buffing it to this day? I'm going to be doing reviews like this until I run out of albums. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please like. See you next time.